first of all, uh, Turbine, we wrote about two years ago during the uh, consent process for the Macra wind farm. And uh, I was out at Macra and speaking <coughs> with someone out there and he said to me that he'd had some Meridian people, or I think it's Meridian, and uh, they'd come around on a Sunday afternoon for three hours to uh, consult with them, um, which I thought was pretty committed and extraordinary and ridiculous. And I started looking into it and found this issue that is very controversial for people that live there. And uh, I thought it was going to be a good backdrop to uh, a human story if we could come up with one. So I assembled this group of people and we started with the, with the issue, uh, but we definitely didn't finish with the issue because of course, you know, just debating the ins and outs of wind turbines is incredibly tedious. And uh, we started to put in this story over three months just using improvisation and uh, uh, always scripting. We always script stuff and we have a very tight script, there's nothing improvised. Uh, but we do <coughs> develop the script on our feet and we've always done that in, throughout the last eight plays that we've done, starting with Seed, the first play that we did in 2000, which was about a seed farm where he couldn't get his wife pregnant. Um, and that, the backdrop to that story was genetic engineering in New Zealand. And strangely enough, it was happening at exactly the same time that the whole corn gate thing was unfolding and we found with just about, with every play that we've done, there has been some weird kind of synchronicity and uh, even doing this again, this whole thing erupting over the uh, dock um, bribery, uh, it just seems incredible. Three months write it, to write all the plays. All the plays are written over three months. Um, that gives you enough time to do all the improvising and create maybe twice the amount of material that you need and then a middle month where you cut it down and you start working it and then another whole month where you basically know the material but you rehearse it and you rehearse it and you rehearse it and we go over and over it until I'm satisfied, I'm kind of spurgeous <laughs> until it's absolutely tight. I'm pedantic about it, but it's really just time. None of us are good writers, none of us are geniuses or anything like that, but all the physical stuff happens at the same time. The design happens at the same time. There's time to do it like that. You don't, it's not sort of an adjunct at the end to design it and put in the lights at the end. We even try and rehearse with lights and do stuff in the dark if it requires them, see what it looks like. But it's just about having time. And most of us went to drama school in our early 20s. And I've been doing, you know, I got into drama school when I was 19, and so I've been doing it for 20 years now. But um, when I left, I was determined not to sit by the phone and wait. And I just had some like-minded people and we first thing we did was uh, write a show in, in Fringe Festival, just an hour long, about two brothers backstage waiting to do a show that they'd written. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, you start with what you know and then we sort of develop the skills from there. But I think it was really just came out of a desperation to get work. <laughs> no, definitely the the it's Sometimes as an actor you're just a conduit for someone else's viewpoint and someone else's idea and it's incredibly attractive and also more scary in a way to actually be involved in something right from the start and actually have your opinions. You know, friends of mine come and see this and you know some of the attitudes and, and thoughts that, that are um, stated in the play, you sort of want to go, did you like it? Oh, that's mine. You know, <laughs> did you like it? Oh, that's Nick. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> no, I just, I just love that sense of responsibility and like the, it's a different sort of creativity.
But I'd seen, I'd seen some of the shows that Tim put on, and I'd seen him in other shows at the Circa and Downstage. And, um, you know, we were friends, and he'd seen some of the things I did, and he asked me to work with him, and I was like, yeah, absolutely, I'd love to. It's interesting work, it's, a, it's our own voices, yeah, New Zealand stories. I'm interested in that, and I'm interested in devising and making work. I had I seen the show the first time and thought it was really good and I worked with Tim Tim uh, directed our grade show at drama school. So I knew to a point what I was <laughs> <laughs> um, but no I've I've really enjoyed working with this group. Like, there's a great dynamic and the um, the rehearsal we had a couple of weeks rehearsal before Christmas and it was just basically for me I think to put me into it so that when we came back this year it was kind of like we all knew what was happening and yeah it's been a great process. It's, it's just always been a really buzzy little cast list. It's small, we did the whole thing together and we all get on really well. So I think it sort of somehow shows in the work because uh, this has definitely been the one that I've been most satisfied with this play. <coughs> have a side or a message about the issue of wind farms but we did find ourselves talk, telling a story about people confronted with change and how difficult that was and uh, compromise really but um, as far as the issue goes we just prefer to let you know this character believes this this character believes the opposite let them slug it out and the audience can kind of draw their own conclusions a problem with this we came to re-meet the play because we had recorded it but we'd lost the tapes so we couldn't remember exactly what we had done so, we so had to yeah and then it. it would be like oh yes hold on <coughs> it was definitely this and then yeah. Yeah. So and it, there. Yeah. it did come back to us but it was probably good that we didn't have the tapes to completely recreate it anally we just you know <laughs>